Good afternoon. This is Dr. Havens with our recorded lecture for Chapter 15 of Unit 5. For the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about advancing your career. Graduation is not the end of your learning, but it's the beginning of your journey toward becoming a professional nurse. We know that sometimes when we attend a graduation ceremony, they call it commencement. And the word commence means to begin. So commencement is the beginning of your post-student life or your life as a professional. There are lots of opportunities and possibilities in nursing. You can work in the OR, the ER, the ICU, a med surge floor, the psych ward, a rehabilitation hospital, um, you can, there are just so many different roles and opportunities for nurses that you um, will never be without exciting opportunities. As we know, there are several paths to becoming a registered nurse. There are still a few diploma programs around the country in the olden days prior to the 1960s. Nurses went to the hospital and trained. They didn't actually study in a college or university. Typically, the diploma programs were three years. Often they involved the nursing students living in a dormitory on the hospital property, and then they worked shifts as students in order to get their training in addition to having classroom exercises. But this meant that they had an awful lot of clinical experience, and when they graduated, they really were able to perform clinically very well. In the 1960s, there was a shift to move the didactic or the theory portion of nursing into the community colleges and universities and then move away from the hospital setting for nurses training. Now, I believe there's only one diploma program left um, in Florida, and it may be down south. I think it's associated with a hospital in Miami but I'm not exactly sure, so don't quote me. But by and large, the diploma programs are gone. Um, there has been a push, as we said previously, at, to have the BSN as the entry level for practice. However, there's such a nursing shortage that um, most people are against this. They say that it would increase the nursing shortage if it took four full years for people to train to be nurses as opposed to two. People can always get their ASDN and then go back to school and get their RN to BSN degree as opposed to studying for a full four years in a generic BSN program. So the next level of nurses training after the bachelor's degree would be the MSN, Master of Science in Nursing. These are usually specialized roles such as nurse educator, clinical nurse specialist, and maybe nurse practitioners. The highest degree in nursing are the doctoral degrees, which is either a PhD in nursing, which is a research-based degree, or either the DNP of doctor or doctor of nursing practice, which is generally a clinically oriented degree. Any transition in our life is always a challenge. Um, a transition can stress you out and even shock you if you're not prepared for it. So generally, employers are going to expect new nursing graduates to come to work ready to provide safe patient care, to have good organizational skills, to be able to prioritize and delegate and provide leadership to ancillary nursing personnel. Um, this can be a huge expectation for students, but you can grow and adapt and roll with it. Here's an example of the type of transition you may find yourself in. In most ASDN programs, when you go to clinical or SIM, you're assigned to care for one to three patients, um, maybe six patients under a preceptor supervision if you're doing a preceptorship very close to the end of the program. So when you get on your first nursing job, you might work seven days in a row, either eight or 12 hour shifts caring for 10 or more med surge patients. In addition, you may be expected to supervise um, several ancillary personnel, the LPNs, nurse techs, and nursing assistants. So you have to focus on efficiency, speed, the amount of work getting done rather than the quality of the work. And this creates a good deal of stress because um, it's just a different pace than you've had in nursing school, but you can adapt to it. 
There are a variety of transition to practice um, programs in addition to this course that you're currently taking in leadership. This is a transition to practice course to prepare you for what to expect. You can do a menteeship in a hospital or the facility that hires you for your initial registered nursing job. They can give support and teach you about time management, communicating with the team, and other skills that you need. And you can do a formal internship or residency program, kind of like the Star In program that's offered at some of the HCA hospitals. These tend to be six months to a year. You get your skills. And this is a good way to transition into practice as a new registered nurse. So the advantage of the menteeships and residency programs are that they allow graduate nurses to develop a support network. And also um, it's a protected environment in which you can learn your skills and practice and get your competence and your self-confidence up so that at the end of the residency period, you will have achieved all of your technical skills, competence in decision making, and also good self-confidence. There are also orientation programs that you will typically be offered either online or in a classroom or that kind of thing at any hospital or healthcare facility to where at which you decide to seek employment. When you are accepting an offer for a transition to practice program, such as a residency or menteeship, here are a, quick, a few questions you want to ask. How long will the program be? Will, with What types of people am I going to be working? Um, when will I be allowed to be on my own? What happens if at the end of the orientation or the residency, if I still feel like I need more assistance? Um, ask about the mentor you will be assigned, how much experience do they have, and so on and so forth. You may also find support in joining one or more of the um, nursing professional associations. I think we've already pretty much covered these in previous modules. So we all know about the American Nurses Association. They advocate for nurses in the political arena in terms of legislation and public policy making. Um, there are several benefits to membership. There's also the National League for Nursing, which is considered the voice for nursing education. They have a lot to do with um, testing service, research, and publications. They also lobby for nursing issues legislatively, and they work in cooperation with the ANA. And then there's also the National Student Nurses Association, as well as multiple specialty organizations that can be helpful to you if you plan to work in a specialized area of nursing. For instance, I am primarily a psychiatric nurse, so my specialty professional organization is APNA, or the American Psychiatric Nurses Association, of which I enjoy being a member very much. Normally, when we're not in the middle of a global pandemic, um, we can attend annual um, national and regional conferences and get to network with other psychiatric nurses, find out what's going on in the field, there are committees that you can serve on that have to do with various aspects of psychiatric nursing, and you can get continuing education credits for free as a benefit of your membership. Usually they're related to psychotropic medication or new research-based practices and things like that, and I really enjoy doing those courses. And in closing, I just wanna say a few words about the different stages of a nursing career. At first, there's the promise phase, uh, the honeymoon phase. This is when you identify your strengths and you um, are full of optimism and um, possibilities, ideas about what you would like to do. And so this is the phase in which you're gonna build your knowledge base and your skills. Next comes the momentum phase. This is when you achieve mastery in your specialty and you become recognized for your expertise. Maybe you get a promotion, maybe you achieve national certification in that specialty area or that kind of thing. Um, how do you, another way to know that you've achieved mastery is when the new graduates come in and you realize you've, how much you've learned by being on your job for several years. And that can be um, very gratifying to know that you can now mentor the newbies through the process that you went through. The final or mature phase is called the harvest phase. This is the final phase of your career that can last many years. This is when you reach your prime in the professional, but you will always need to grow and develop to hang on or retain your, your status and your position. 
And in conclusion, I want to just reiterate that once your transition has been successfully accomplished, and I know that it will be for all of you, the practicing nurse can look forward to many career opportunities available in nursing and have a wonderful career. Thank you very much.